League of Legends has been one of the biggest games in the world for the past 15 years. What started as a simple 5v5 MOBA has evolved into a vast multimedia universe consisting of countless spin-offs, comic books and graphic novels, a thriving esports scene attracting millions of viewers, and now, a Netflix series that might be one of the best animated shows of the past decade. And yet, at the center of it all, sits a broken, unbalanced mess of a game whose core gameplay hasn't been changed since it released in 2009. It has one of the most toxic and ego-driven communities of any game, but continues to be played by hundreds of millions of people year after year. But why? How does a game that is so hated by its own player base stay so popular and addicting? Well, let's talk about it. League of Legends is a multiplayer online battle arena originally released on PC back in October of 2009. The game was developed by Brandon Beck and Mark Merrill, who were inspired by a popular Warcraft 3 mod called Defense of the Ancients, or more commonly known as Dota. While the mod was extremely popular, boasting over a million active players, it lacks the polish and support from a proper game developer to make it a mainstream game. So Beck and Merrill created their own MOBA they could support long term, and that's where Riot Games was born. League of Legends took three years to develop, fit with 20 unique champions to choose from. The early years of League of Legends were more of a testing ground rather than a fully polished experience. The engine was still very rough, the graphics were awful, the champions released were janky and broken and the game struggled to find its identity. But it had a few key advantages over other games that would ultimately shoot its popularity into the stratosphere. League was one of the first mainstream games to be completely free to play. Instead of generating revenue from sales of the game, Riot makes its money from selling cosmetics, mainly champion skins. While other popular games like World of Warcraft and RuneScape were also technically free to play. They required a membership to progress into higher levels and unlock better characters. League of Legends truly had no monetary barrier to enjoy the game. You could download it and experience everything the game had to offer without spending a single dollar. League also received constant updates and patches, improving the quality of the game and consistently introducing new characters and game modes for free. This business model was way ahead of its time. Free to play, live service games focused on cosmetics has become the dominant force in the gaming industry. And Riot Games had been doing it for nearly a decade before anyone even took notice. On July 13th, 2010, Riot added a 5v5 ranked playlist to League, granting players ELO from victories and allowing them to climb up the ranks from bronze to platinum this update sparked interest into the competitive nature of League, and was the catalyst for the growth of an esports scene. The first League World Championships took place in June of 2011, and was an overwhelming success. The tournament captured worldwide attention, and ignited significant growth across various regions. While the game itself was still rough around the edges, the potential was obvious, and Riot knew it. League continued to grow in both popularity and in quality. Broken items and spells were removed. More champions were added or reworked. And the game's identity became increasingly defined. The competitive esports scene grew alongside it, spawning numerous iconic moments, team rivalries, and incredible players who took the game to new heights. But it wasn't just the esports scene that was growing League of Legends. It was also thanks to Riot's incredible marketing strategy. While the game itself wasn't always graphically advanced, the same can't be said for Riot's advertisements. League's trailers and cinematics have been consistently amazing since launch. The animation quality and sound design is top notch, bringing their well-known characters to life in unique ways. Whether it's champion spotlights, music videos, or short stories. 
while League doesn't have a dedicated single player mode, Riot Games still put great care in developing the lore of each character, building their own world of Runeterra and fleshing out a detailed timeline with every subsequent champion release. These videos have generated billions of views on YouTube and is one of the biggest contributors to the company's success over the years. Riot's also collaborated with many mainstream artists to promote their game and esports scene. Most infamously, the first official Worlds Anthem released in 2014 was written by Imagine Dragons and currently has over 400 million views on YouTube and 750 million streams on Spotify. League of Legends was starting to become one of the biggest entities in the gaming industry. And over time, the competitive playlists took over as the most dominant and addicting form of League of Legends, specifically the solo duo game mode. Riot had noticed this trend and shifted more of their attention towards balancing champions and updating Summoner's Rift to provide a more cohesive and enjoyable ranked experience. Early game modes and maps like Dominion Twisted Treeline and Ascension fell by the wayside in favor of the competitive game mode. This decision was the turning point for Riot Games and League of Legends as a whole. Not only did the relationship between Riot and their fanbase start to sour, but the hatred for the game and toxic nature of the League community really began to take shape. Over the years, League has developed a reputation for having one of the most toxic and hateful communities of any game. Like most multiplayer experiences, League is a team-based game, meaning that individual performance does not always equate to winning or losing. And in such a competitive environment like Ranked, tension and arguments are bound to occur. While griefing and toxicity exists in every single franchise, League has two distinct characteristics that make the experience of playing the game hundreds of times worse. First is the lack of a proper voice chat. Not being able to communicate with your team other than in-game pings and typed messages makes it way more difficult to win games, which just breeds further frustrations. And because there's no voice chat, people are much more likely to whine, complain, and throw insults at you from behind a screen. This toxicity is further intensified by the fact that the solo duo ranked playlist is the most popular game mode. If you want to play at the highest and most competitive level of League, you can only do so by yourself or with one other person. This means you'll always be playing with different people, so there's a higher chance that you'll run into someone extremely toxic or arrogant who will ruin your experience with the game. But despite these glaring issues, the League of Legends brand continued to expand. The esports scene developed their own regional leagues, gathering more worldwide attention and creating even more hype surrounding the Worlds tournaments each year. Riot continued their promotional dominance, releasing seasonal cinematics that garnered hundreds of millions of views each year. They even created their own virtual bands with League characters like KDA and True Damage. Even if these ventures were just to sell more skins, it was working. More and more people were getting exposed to League of Legends, increasing Riot's profits even if the game's overall state worsened. In 2019, Riot released their first spin-off game, known as Teamfight Tactics. The game uses the same champions from League, but in an auto-battler format, and has been able to develop its own dedicated community and fanbase. They even expanded into other media forms, releasing comic books and graphic novels to flesh out the story even more. And all of this venturing out from their original game design finally culminated in 2021 with the release of Arcane. The Netflix series was met with heavy doubt upon release, considering both the reputation League of Legends had and the numerous failed adaptations of video games and movies and shows in the past. But Arcane was different. Its unique art style blends 2D and 3D animation perfectly, creating visually stunning set pieces and action sequences. 
the show expands the League of Legends universe by delving into the lore of Piltover and Zaun, exploring the relationships and backstories of popular characters like Vi, Jinx, Caitlyn, Victor, and Jace. The voice acting is top-notch, with standout performances from Jason Spizak and Ella Purnell as Silco and Jinx, respectively. And the sound design enhances important moments in the show beautifully. Crucially, though, is that the show is able to stand on its own. While being a fan of the games will make the experience more enjoyable, Arcane appeals to both gamers and newcomers with its digestible and captivating storyline. League of Legends had officially evolved from a simple MOBA to an expansive media franchise. The success of Arcane brought a brand new wave of players to the game, as the player count reached an all-time high in early 2022. But that doesn't mean that the game was actually good. The newly released Chemtech Dragon was forced to be removed because of how game-breaking it was. New champion releases were highly criticized for being totally overpowered or completely unplayable, and the change from a year-long season to multiple splits made the competitive toxic culture of the game that much worse. And yet, after 15 years of success, League of Legends continues to thrive. It's not because the experience itself is any better, but rather it's a toxic relationship with a game you just can't get out of. Because from an outside perspective, League of Legends looks like an amazing entity. Worlds continues to be incredibly successful, reaching all-time viewership highs in 2024, and showcasing the incredible heights and skill expression that can be reached in the game. The promotional material Riot creates is always engaging and entertaining, whether it's music videos, cinematic trailers, or award-winning animated shows. These experiences grab your attention and get you hyped to come back to the game, only to realize it's the same mess it was when you last played it. And the worst part is, League of Legends at its core is still a great game. When you're playing well and able to win, it's a very fun and rewarding experience. But then you get spam pinged with question marks for no reason, get called a bunch of slurs in chat, and then watch as the newly released champion destroys your team with only one item. And you realize that nothing's really been fixed. But Riot don't really care, because they're still making money, regardless of how angry or upset their player base gets. With Arcane Season 2 just recently being released, I'm sure this cycle will continue. And with plenty of League lore still yet to be expanded upon, I'm sure there'll be more stories to adapt in the future. With so many other projects Riot Games is working on, it seems like the game that started it all is getting left behind. But as long as we keep playing and Riot keeps printing money, Nothing is gonna change.